webinar on women and fishing. We want to welcome you into the world of fishing today. So I'm the Becoming an Outdoor Woman Coordinator for the Minnesota DNR. And joining us today, we have Nancy Kep. Uh, she's a pro angler, she's a bait shop owner, and she's a volunteer for our Becoming Outdoor Woman program. She's going to be um, giving you some information today. And also online, we have Michelle Morey, she's the president of the Women Angler of Minnesota um, organization. So she'll be talking about that at the end. Also online is Benji Cohen, he's our host for today. If you notice up in the, the corner, you'll have a question and answer. You can ask questions in there, but we're gonna go through our presentation. We'll be looking at the question and answers and uh, asking our speakers at the end, um, the questions that you might have for today. So I'm going to go ahead and start. Um, this is all about welcoming you into the world of fishing and talking about the Take of Mom Fishing Weekend. And uh, so, Benji, the next slide, please. So I'm, the, as I said, the coordinator of the Becoming Outdoor Woman program in Minnesota. Our website is right there on the page. If you forget about the website, you could go to the DNR and search Becoming Outdoor Woman, then you'll get to our site. And we're a, a program within the DNR all about helping women learn outdoor skills in Minnesota. It's a small program. I'm a part-time coordinator but it's more of a grassroots organization. I have a lot of volunteers, people like uh, Nancy Capazon volunteered for my program to offer more programs for women to learn outdoor skills. Next. So our mission, I just wanna let everybody know about both so you're, you're more familiar about it, is to teach women outdoor skills related to hunting, fishing, and non-consumptive in a safe, supportive environment. And that's really important. So it's a, the bow program is a third hunting related, third fishing related, third um, non-consumptive sport, things like you know, rock climbing or hiking or biking. Um, and that safe, supportive environment is, is so important. Christine Thomas out of St. Uh, University of Wisconsin, Stevens Point developed a pro program. She wondered why if women make up about 50% of the population, we make up such a small fraction of the hunting and fishing world. And she's developed this program to provide women with opportunities to learn skills um, from other women and from in a safe, supportive environment. So welcome to the BOW program. We, our program, we offer two large workshops every year. We have a fall in September and a winter in January. And these are our big welcome workshops where you learn a variety of skills. You take three different classes during the weekend and you have that social support. You get to meet other women who are interested in the outdoors and our, our wonderful volunteers, which I have a volunteer steering committee that comes and, and serves as my host during the workshops to welcome you into the world of the outdoors. And we also have volunteer instructors um, at our workshops. Next, we have skill classes that if you wanna come and learn just one skill in particular, something like maybe fly fishing, you can just take a class on fly fishing, small class size, one-on-one -on -one, um, with instructors so you learn a skill. And then finally, we have mentored programs. So those are weekend events. So Nancy's gonna talk about her walleye weekend, which we consider a mentor program. You, you already know how to fish, now you wanna really learn how to fish for walleye or a sturgeon or, or another species. So we have weekend events. Uh, Bo did offer a family program as well. Um, we found that some women wanna learn skills as a family unit. So with our cooperating organizations, like Eagle Bluff down in Lanesboro, we offer a family weekend. So you can learn outdoor skills related to hunting, fishing, and non-consumptive sports. And again, there's our website. If you wanna learn more about Bo, our 2020 calendar, which I'll, I'll hold up here in, in the camera, is online. Um, and these are typically the programs that we offer yearly. Unfortunately, due to COVID, we're not authorized to do in-person per programming right now, but you can go to our website, look at the 2020 calendar, and then just see what we have that we typically offer year to year. Um, so next slide, please. And I also want to really take this opportunity to talk about Take a Bomb Fishing Week. And if you've never heard about it before, this year it's May 8th to the 9th, um, and a woman in Minnesota can fish without a license. And you can fish for anything that's open during that time. So this is a great opportunity if you're new to fishing, you can go out fishing on May 8th to 9th without a fishing license and try it out. Or if you're an avid angler, 
this is a great opportunity to invite your friend with you, your, your women friend who've never tried fishing before and take them fishing. They don't need to purchase a license during that take a mom fishing weekend. Typically, take a mom fishing weekend is offered the same time as the fishing opener. It's usually on the same weekend. Um, this year, it just did not fall on the opener. So Mother's Day is actually the weekend before the fishing opener this year. So you can't fish for walleye on, on mom's take a kid or take a mom fishing weekend, but you can fish for a variety of other species. And one of them we're going to talk about today, Nancy's going to talk more about our panfish, um, sunfish, how to fish for um, panfish out there. So what we're going to do next is if you're new to fishing, how do I learn how to fish? If you're already an angler, how do I learn more about fishing? And what are some opportunities to fish today? So at the next slide, Benji. The great place to start if you're brand new to fishing is our redesigned web pages on the DNR website, the Learn to Fish web pages. These are all redesigned. They're, um, they're done wonderfully well. And here's the website for you if you want to write that down. If you forget this website, go to DNR website and type in Learn to Fish. You'll come right up to this website. And you can see on the bullets there, it's how to start fishing, how to find a place, how to guides, opportunities, ethics, stewardships. There's regulations that you can find. And what I'm going to do is just run through these pages. So if you're new to fishing or if you forgot how to do something, I want to show what these pages offer you and it's a great way to start fishing. So next is I'm going to open up the tab for start fishing and what the website looks like is, is on the screen there. And you can see, you can like buy a license. How do you buy a license? Maybe you forgot. Or how to select a rod and reel or outfit a tackle box. And when you open up those tabs, I opened up the tie your hook to line. We actually embedded videos in there. So you can watch this video, how to tie a clinch knot if you forgot. Um, so set the drag, bait your hook, set the hook, fish with artificial lures, how to land a fish, decide if the fish is safe to eat, and even flay a fish. So this tab shows you um, all the basics of how to get started fishing. The next tab, Benji next, is um, finding a place to fish. You know, where where can you go fishing? Maybe you're new to fishing, you don't know what where to go. We have the Lake Finder desktop app uh, and we have the mobile app there. Lake Superior, top walleye lakes, trout lakes, rivers and streams, and all the way down to accessibility. What, what places are more accessible? If maybe I'm in a wheelchair, how would I get to an accessible place? How do I fish in the Twin Cities? What's a good place to go? All the way down, do you see that state parks with fishing starter kits? Our state parks have the I Can Fish program and they have starting equipment. And most state parks with fishing waters, um, you can fish for free, you don't need a license. So all that information on how to find a place is there. And what I'm gonna do is just open up the Lake Finder mobile app. So next, Benji. And that's what it looks like. You can search a lake by name, um, by a map, by what's near where your location is, um, you buy a license. So our mobile app is a great opportunity to find a lake next to you. Next. Um, the next tab is the how-to guides. Say you're already an angler and you want to learn how do, I, how do I go about um, sturgeon fishing? You can open up the lake sturgeon and there's going to be a variety of um, uh, information there how to how to fish for lake sturgeon where to go fishing i'm going to open up the sunfish because that's going to be open during the mom take a kid fishing weekend and so this is so i open up that tab it comes up with when to fish where to fish how to fish the gear that you need to go sun fishing what's important to know and basic biology of those fish so those how-to guides are great if you want to learn the basics or a species specific how to how to fish for that the next tab is called opportunities. So maybe I want to learn to fish with a mentor or with in a, in a class. The learn to fish opportunities of the Becoming Outdoor Woman program classes will be listed there, the family program classes, the state parks, I can fish programs and so forth in a normal year. This is COVID, so we're not authorized for in-person programming at this point, but normally those classes will be listed there. So if you're looking for a class to learn to fish, um, this is where we'd go. I'm gonna show you next the typical classes that the Becoming Outdoor Woman 
offers yearly. We have the skill classes. Maybe you want to learn just to ice fish or fly fish or spin cast fishing. We'll have those skill classes just a couple hours long, focus on one particular topic. And then we have the mentor program. We have the Women's Steelhead Clinic up on the North Shore. You're already an avid angler and you've always wanted to try steelhead fishing. We work with Lisa, who's part of the um, Steelheaders Association, and she, she teaches a clinic on just steelhead fishing. We have a wonderful sturgeon fishing trip weekend up in Baudette. The DNR Fisheries Guy talks about the sturgeon management, what has happened to the sturgeon, how it's made this tremendous comeback, and they um, take you out, the guides will take you out and teach you how to, to uh, sturgeon fish. And we have a walleye fishing weekend, which is again held by Nancy Kep, which is a wonderful opportunity to meet other women interested in walleye fishing, to learn the biology of walleye, to learn how to fish for walleye, go out on a boat, walleye fish, she brings you back in, lays your fish and does a fish fry. So it's a, a great opportunity to have that social connection piece and to learn the skill. So those are typical years. Unfortunately, this is not a typical year, but these are classes we typically offer. Next. Then also we have the fishing license and regulations. If you forgot what a regulation was or what your limit or possession is, could be. And I also wrote down that angling is very inexpensive. You can buy a 24 hour license for $12 or a 72 hour license for 14 or an, a season license for $25. It's very inexpensive sport. It's a great opportunity to get outdoors and to experience fishing. And married combo is 40. This year it's a little different. Um, you can buy licenses uh, through the mobile app online or in person. My husband and I went to Fleet Farm. We had to go and show both licenses this year to buy a married combo. Normally we don't, didn't have to do that, but this year that has changed. So be ready to um, have your license ready, um, your, your driver's license ready when you buy that married combo. So that's a great opportunity to learn to fish if you've never tried. It's go to the DNR website, type in learn to fish and all that information is has been just redesigned and developed for you to learn. So next, Benji. Next, I wanna turn it over to Nancy Kep. Nancy has many hats. She's a mom of, of boys and one's in college, one's still at home. She's a pro angler. She, uh, she fishes for walleye. She's an owner and operator of Kep's Bait Shop up in Glenwood, Minnesota. And one thing we wanted to really emphasize for women is bait shops are a great resource to go into to find out what's biting in the area. Where should I go in the area? Um, what um, type of lures should I use? And Nancy works this bait shop. She'd be a great resource for you. And she's also a volunteer for the bow program. She, she works with Women's uh, Walleye Weekend. She runs kids fishing programs. She runs the fishing leagues up in her area. She's a, she has many hats and I'm gonna turn it over to Nancy. All right, thank you very much, Linda. Um, yes, as Linda said, I do wear many hats, but I enjoy all of them that I put on on a daily basis. Um, right now, we're just gearing up for the Minnewaska Lake or high school fishing team. So I've been working hard on getting all the entries in and, and doing all that stuff for the kids um, so we can start fishing in June for the fishing team. So um, always exciting. Um, and yes, as she also said, I am a instructor for the bowl event. I put on a what's called a Women's Walleye Weekend. And later on um, in my webinar, we'll touch base on that. Um, but first of all, I wanted to start talking to you guys about simple panfish rig. What women need to go out and start fishing on uh, Mother's Day weekend, especially if it's the first time and you have no idea what to buy, where to start. That's what I'm going to go over today um, in my slides. So first of all, we have how to rig your rod for panfish. Uh, what I have here is just a real simple slide that shows you um, bobber stops. You're going to need slip bobber. Um, those are two of the most important things. I prefer the slip bobber. That way, if you're fishing and you have the old red and white ones that clip onto your line, those are fine too. But what happens if you're fishing, say, like eight feet of water, you can't reel your line all the way up. So your fish is still going to be in the water um, and your bobber is going to be up to the tip of your eyelet already. So um, one thing I suggest is slip bobber so you can reel your line all the way up and get your fish easier. So when you're doing your bobber stop, um, one thing to remember is it's always bobber stop, feed, bobber. So 
first things first, bobber stop feed, and then your bobber. So you're going to put your bobber stop on and the bobber stop package comes a little bead and you're going to put the bead and what that bead's going to do is that's going to sit on top of the bobber. I have a little um, package here. Northland makes a really nice slip bobber that you can use. You just put your line through there um, and then the bead's going to sit right on top. So when the fish comes and takes it, it's going to go down underneath the water. Um, in addition to that, a simple split shot uh, sinker is all you need. Um, you want to keep it kind of light because if you get it too heavy, that's going to pull your bobber down and then it's not going to be as effective. So, and a simple hook. Um, this whole setup right here probably is not going to cost you more than $5. The big, biggest expense is going to be your bobber. So, um, you know, again, bobber stop bead, your bobber, slip shot, and then your hook. That's one easy way uh, to tie up one of your rods for pan fishing. Next, please, Benji. As far as tying your lures on, I use the improved clinch knot a lot. Um, there's a lot of other different names for it. Uh, they call it the trilene knot, the fisherman's knot, and the clinch knot are the three that I've heard. So this one I feel is the easiest way to tie on uh, a lure. Um, as Linda said in the DNR website, you can find out how to do that. And you can also go, um, YouTube is a great place to go to find out information on all the different knots and, and how to tie them. As far as you know, easiness, this is the easiest one. This is the one I would start out with first, uh, and then you can always move up from there. Uh, sur uh, the surgeon's knot is probably the hardest one to get, and they'll have that on YouTube too, and that's what I would use if I'm using a braided line connecting it to a monofilament line or a floral carbon line. So, but easy, clinch knot, try to use that one. Um, and here is a simple jig. This is just a simple crappie jig. Probably costs two bucks in the store. Uh, you can use it um, when you're fishing for crappies. You're also gonna catch sunfish on it. Nice and easy, cheap, cast it out. You can have this on your rig that we just rigged up with the bobber. However, because of the, the head of that is gonna be a little bit heavy, then you probably won't need a sinker. So you kind of have to judge it on what ounce size hook you get or lure you get if you need the sinker or not. If your bobber goes under, maybe you need to take the sinker off um, and then just use the hook itself tipped with some sort of bait. So next please, Benji. These are two easy lures to use. Uh, this is the clam drop kick. This is something that normally we would use in the winter time, but don't second guess yourself. They work well in the summer as well. You know, they bite on them in the winter, they're gonna bite on them in the summer. As you can see, the eyelet of that jig has paint in it. They make a tool that you can use. It gets the paint out of the jig head. It's safe, it's easy. Um, you just put the, the tool right inside there and you clinch it down and that will get all the paint out of that eyelet for you. Uh, I see a lot of people using another hook, trying to get out that paint in the eyelet. Not a good idea because what's gonna happen is once you break through, you're gonna hit your finger and then you got a hook in your finger. So I always suggest to use the eyelet remover um, or the paint remover. <clears throat> it's $1.29 at most stores. Um, nice to have in your tackle box whenever you need it. Um, they make summer jigs too that might need eyelets cleaned out. So it's always nice to have. Um, the next one is probably one of my favorite go-tos is the beetle spin. That is uh, an all around good tool to have in your tackle box when you go out fishing. You can use that cast off the dock. Sometimes you can use bait, sometimes you don't need to use bait. Um, it's really up to you. You're gonna catch sunfish, crappies, you might catch the occasional northern and the bass once the season is open. Um, you know, then you can keep those fish. Um, unfortunately, for Mother's Day weekend, you won't be able to, but that doesn't mean that you won't catch them. So um, beetle spins are a great, great tool to use. They make all sorts of different colors and sizes. Um, people use them all summer long, um, and that's a great, great, piece of tackle to have in your tackle box. Next. When it comes to live bait, uh, there's all sorts of different choices you can use uh, for sunfish and crappies. What I would suggest are night crawlers. Um, as you can see, there's a picture of a night crawler there. I would not use the whole night crawler. I would just pinch off like a quarter of it and put it on your uh, 
piece of tackle that you're using or the lure that you're using, hook, whatever it might be. Um, if you put the whole thing on there, what's going to happen is the sunfish are going to bite at it and they're going to start at the bottom and you're going to feel your bobber go down and you're going to think, okay, how come I'm not catching this fish? Well, because they're not actually eating the hook, they're eating your worm. So if you just put a quarter of it on, when they bite, they're going to be biting the hook. So um, those are a very good choice. There's also leeches. Um, leeches are another good tool to use while you're sun fishing. Uh, I would suggest small leeches. Leeches usually come in a variety of sizes, small, medium, large jumbos. For panfish fishing, I would definitely use the small leeches. Um, that way it's a uh, smaller size. I mean, you think of a, a crappie's mouth or a sunfish mouth, their mouth are a little smaller. So if you put a jumbo, a jumbo leech on, it's going to be a little bit harder for that fish to bite it and get through to the hook and set the hook. Um, another thing that shouldn't go forgotten is your Berkeley power baits. These are little baits that are in jars. Um, they're artificial. You put them on your hook. One thing I like about these is that they last for a long time. So I tell parents when they come in and they're going camping and they're like, oh, we got our kids with and there's a dock um, and they want to fish off the dock. What do you suggest for bait? Even though I'm a, a huge live bait person because the bait business has been my family for years, um, I always kind of lean towards these because you can put these on and you'll be able to catch four, five, six, seven fish with just one of these round little nuggets on your hook. Um, that way you're not changing having to put bait on all the time. Um, kids are fishing, great thing to put on their hook because then they're not coming back to you all the time saying, I need a worm, I need a leech, put bait on my hook. Um, so these are always a, a good option, a good standby to have. Um, and then also don't forget about wax worms. I know mostly people use them in the winter. Um, we carry them all summer long at the bait shop and people use them in the summer to catch fish as well. So next please. When it comes to rod and reels, it's kind of a, a, a game that you have to play and what you're comfortable with. And, and um, a lot of times people come in the store and they don't know what to get. They don't know even where to start. Um, on every rod that you look at or that you choose at the, at the um, sporting goods store, wherever you're purchasing, they have information on that rod. And what that tells you is, first of all, for example, in this slide, it says 7.6. Okay, so that's the rod length. That's how long the rod is. And then it talks about the weight. It's a medium size rod. So it's not going to give you a lot of action. Um, if you're looking for really good sensitivity, um, it's going to be a little bit on the heavier side. Then it will tell you what line to use. So the line suggested for this pole is 4 to 12 pounds. And then it also talks about the lure size, uh, what lure is best suited for this rod. Um, if you look over a little bit on the other side there where it says ultralight, and it says 1 to 4 pound test. So that's going to be a really light rod that's going to give you a lot of sensitivity. So you want to use a lighter um, pound test of line that you're using. And then it goes up to light and that's four to eight pounds. When I'm walleye fishing, I usually use a medium light um, when I'm walleye fishing. When I'm pan fishing, it's strictly ultralights just because it's so much fun to catch them with the sensitivity of that light rod. Um, <clears throat> it makes fishing that much more fun. Um, also, on the reels itself, um, on every reel, if you look at the bale of the reel, it will actually tell you what kind of line to put on this reel. So, for example, this one says on the bale, it says uh, two to three pound test, and you can put on 150 yards of line. Okay, and it also has on there <clears throat> four pound test, and you can put on 100 yards of line. It doesn't give you anything after four pounds. So I wouldn't put any more, any heavier line on here than four pound test. You can put six pound test, but it's not going to be as effective. So really look at the bales and see what they say and how much line you can put on and what size is the best for the size of the reel. So this one, obviously, since it's four pound test is the heaviest you can go, this probably would be a great reel that you would use for when you're going pan fishing. When you go to your bait shops and your in your big box stores, I always suggest when you're starting out to buy a rod and reel combo. This way you have your rod and it's matched with the reel that's perfect for the rod. So you don't have to um, 
tattoos and try to decide, okay, I need a reel, now I need a, a rod, what's best, what's not best. Not saying that you can't do it, but I always suggest uh, rod and reel combos to people who are just starting out because everything they need is going to be perfect. The rod's gonna fit the reel and the reel's gonna fit the rod. So, um, <clears throat> and most gas or bait shops, um, all the big box stores, they're always gonna have rod and reel combos. They are by far the best sellers in, at least in my bait shop. Next. So talking a little bit about uh, my bait shop. Yeah, I've been there for next month. It's gonna be 22 years, hard to believe. It's been in my family business for uh, probably 30 plus, oh, maybe even 40 years that we've had our first store that we had in Clithrow. So um, bait shops are nothing new to me. Um, like I said, my family's been in the live bait business for many a years. Um, <clears throat> so. I really like to stress live bait. But when you go into these bait shops, use them as your resource. Um, they should be your go-to place, <clears throat> excuse me. They should be your go-to place when you go into a, a new area or maybe you moved into a new town because they're gonna be your reference point. They are the people that are gonna know what's going on, where the fish are biting, what's happening. Um, we have in the, in the back, and it's not shown here, but we have a great big laminated sheet of Lake Minnewaska. On that map of Minnewaska, I have marked on there where to catch sunfish, where you might be able to catch crappies, um, where the best place is for walleyes. Um, so if I'm not there and one of my employees that maybe doesn't fish that much, they can still take you back there and show you that map and say, well, this is where I would go for sunfish. This is where I would go for walleyes. Um, so you guys have that resource and you have that knowledge. They're also gonna be able to tell you what they're biting on. Uh, it might be, um, you know, a, a Lindy Brig, if you're fishing for walleyes, a Lindy Brig with a, a crawler, or maybe fishing opener, it's usually a jig and a minnow bite. Um, for panfish, we can tell you what to buy for panfish, what lures work the best, um, how to tip it, what kind of bait to put on it. Um, and then, you know, especially this time of year, we can tell you where to go as far as fishing. You know, we have a lot of spots here in Glenwood where you can fish right from shore. Um, we have a, a great big dock down by Lakeside, on the Starbucks side, there's a Starbucks Marina where people will catch all sorts of uh, nice crappies and sunfish, especially this time of year when they start moving in to the warmer water. Um, and then there's also the state park on the Starbucks side. And the state park has a great place where you can go and fish just right off the docks of the state park. So, um, you know, use those resources and, and talk to those people at, at those local bait shops and, and pick their brains and find out what is going on and what's happening. Um, I also guide out of the store, so that's a, another big deal when um, you know you're going into a new area. I would rent to get a guide for a half a day of fishing. Probably going to cost you 200, 250 bucks for that uh, day of fishing. But what it's going to do is it's going to show you where the fish are going to bite. You know, I would spend two hours with the guide just talking about spots, where to go, where to fish, for what. Um, you know, take me to the spot where you catch sunfish. Take me to the spot where I'm going to go catch crappies. Um, and then the last two hours is go to those spots and try to catch them. Uh, if you have your phone, they have um, obviously the Navionics map. You can just put on your Navionics phone um, and the app, you can just mark those spots um, as waypoints. So then the next time you go out with maybe your own boat or if you rent a boat, if you're at a cabin or something, um, then you know where to go. You know where those spots are. So, you know, renting a guide is not a, is not a bad idea at all because they can be really helpful, resourceful. Um, they can keep it simple. They can make it difficult. However, you want to choose, you know, you just tell them um, you're paying them. So whatever you want out of that trip, just make sure that you get. So, um, talking a little bit about the Women's Walleye Weekend. Um, it's going to be in June of 2022, which um, this is my third or fourth year I've been doing it, I think. Uh, so the weekend runs a Friday through Sunday. Friday night is usually just the meet and greet. Everybody comes to a, a resort on Lake Minnewaska. We rent some cabins. We just kind of sit out Friday night, um, meet everybody, talk to everybody, see what everybody's level of expertise is as far as walleye fishing. Uh, I tell them a little bit about my seminar I do on Saturday morning and maybe there's something they want to learn more about that I don't have included in my seminar. And then I just make sure that I incorporate that for them so um, they can learn kind of what they want to learn. So 
um, after Friday night, Saturday morning starts out with um, the seminar. So I basically go over lots of basic stuff. Um, we talk about the anatomy of the walleye, uh, understanding the walleye from a little biology part, you know, talking about um, if they can see color, their sense of taste, their sense of smell. We talk about their lateral line, kind of what makes up the walleye. And then we move on to different techniques um, that I use when I'm fishing, whether it's, um, you know, Lindy rig or um, we might be jigging a minnow. Um, there's all sorts of different things we can do. Um, if people want to you know, try maybe trolling rapalas, maybe they've never done that before and they want to learn more about trolling. You know, it's kind of up to you when we go out fishing after the seminar. Um, I have some great local guides, fishing guides that come and help me out for the weekend. So um, you, know, you just pretty much tell them, I really want to go and fish for walleyes, but I want to learn how to troll for walleyes and how to use uh, rapalas and how to know how deep they go and how far back I have to have them and how far I have to troll. They'll help you with all of that. So um, it's really nice to have that knowledge of all those great guys that help me out um, in the seminar or fishing on the water. So it's, it's nice to have their knowledge and to be able to share that with the women. After we get done fishing on Saturday, what we do is we have a little fish cleaning 101. So we'll show all the women how to clean fish. A lot of times it's first time for many of the women that they've ever had to clean fish. You know, I, I had on one of my events, a single mom just got divorced and she had no idea how to clean fish because her ex-husband always did it. So it was nice to be able to give her the knowledge and the experiment on how to clean them and then how much more confident she felt after she got done cleaning them. So, um, and then after the, after cleaning them, of course, we have a fish fry and um, sit around Saturday night and just visit. And then on Sunday, we fish from seven in the morning till noon, and then that kind of ends the weekend for the um, Becoming a Woman Fishing Weekend, the BOW uh, weekend, and um, everybody kind of goes their own way. So um, if you are interested, there is my email on that slide that you can certainly send me an email if you're interested. Um, obviously, once we get closer to next year's event, there'll be lots of stuff on the DNR website for the bow event as well as my personal Facebook page, um, and I believe the DNR page through uh, Becoming an Outdoor Woman on Facebook will also have it, so. Next. Thank you, okay. Nancy. I really appreciate it. Um, yes, and, thank you. And Nancy's also a member of the Women's Anglers of Minnesota group, but next we're gonna have Michelle Moray, who's the current president of the Women's Anglers of Minnesota, or WAM, Talk about uh, opportunities for you to join a group. Um, Becoming Outdoor Woman program is a way to learn skills and to meet other women. Then we encourage you to join organizations, conservation organizations such as WAM in order to continue that sport um, in a very supportive fashion. So, Michelle. Yes, thank you. Thank you both. I, every time we, we did a practice round before and I always learned something each time we go through. So. Uh, women Anglers of Minnesota is a 501c3 nonprofit, and we do support women and children in the sport of fishing. Uh, we've got a 45-year history. In fact, we're the oldest um, women's fishing organization in the country. We've been growing like gangbusters lately. We've got 950 members, and then we offer an educational, safe, and supportive environment that seeks to connect anglers of all experience levels and ages. Um, I have been fishing my whole life. I'm not in the fishing industry. I just love fishing. And I joined WAM about four years ago once my kids got to uh, an age later in high school where they weren't in sports every night of the week. Um, my fishing kind of kicked in again and I found myself fishing with uh, a bunch of friends' husbands. <laughs> thought it was time to my husband fishes too, but just not as much as I do. And so I thought it was time to join this organization. Um, next slide, Benji. So it is uh, $30 a year to join WAM. We also have a kids, a youth membership for girls age 12 to 16, and that's $15. It's free for veterans. We're really proud of that. Um, and like Linda talked about before with the bow program getting started, it's a lot of times women just don't have a peer group that they can reach out to 
uh, to fish with. And that's what I think I'm starting with like the, I think one of the best benefits we offer is this network of women. And for a lot of women, it's the first time that they've ever met other women that love to fish as much as they do. And so um, it's really a cool environment for uh, women to, to get involved with. Next slide. But we do offer a master angler program where we celebrate trophy size catches. You get a, you can earn a pin. Uh, we, we have angler of the year, rookie of the, of the year. We have some education. We've done a, a speaker circuit this winter, which has been fantastic. Um, that's on Facebook. It's real interactive. And when we have member meetings, we have not been able to have those in person. We will usually have a speaker come in. We've got fabulous discounts with, um, Lots of the main manufacturers and players in the fishing industry will put on trips or somebody will just put out a meetup. Um, again, with COVID, that's been slower, but we do have some launches coming up in July and we do have a fall trip that we have planned. And then people will just put on our Facebook site, you know, I've got an open seat. Um, can, you know, does anyone want to come fishing with me or vice versa? I'm looking to go fishing this weekend. Can anyone help? Uh, quarterly newsletter websites. We do in person tournaments. We have our, that's kind of our flagship event coming up June 5th. It's an open water tournament. We have 150 women that uh, participate. We give away $10,000 in prize money, and that will be on the horseshoe chain, and registration is open for that. And then we do several virtual tourneys throughout the year, which are always fun. Uh, that's done through an app on your phone called Fish Donkey. And so you can fish anywhere and kind of on your own time frame. So that's people really enjoy those too. We've got a couple kids tournaments coming up on Fish Donkey too. Um, and then, yeah, membership meetings. And the social media page, we have a private Facebook page, which people really enjoy. It's amazing how you can get to know people uh, on social media, but it's kind of a safe and comfortable place for women to ask questions and not, not feel stupid about them. And, and uh, it, the group is pretty forthcoming in, in information. So that is what we have to offer. Again, it's for, for all different types of skill levels. It's not just for the competitive angler. All right, next slide. Yeah, but here's our open water tournament coming up again on June 5th on the horseshoe train. Chain. We've got the Kids Gone Fishing Virtual Derby coming up. That's nice because uh, we'll give away 30 plus prizes in addition to cash prizes for the, the top competitors. But we have a lot of prizes to give away just for anyone that that enters a fish. And again, that's on Fish Donkey. That starts May 22nd. Next slide. Yeah, we've got the Master Angler program that kind of shows the species. We've got all the core species out there, and then we've thrown in some specialty species. Um, we're actually going to add a few more to that because uh, the members have so much fun fishing for those. And then we've got we've kind of taken that to the next level, and we've got a Wham Slam challenge. So um, it started in March, and it goes through October 31st, and it's kind of a point system where you can earn prizes uh, for different size species on the list. Next slide. And we just got done with the fishing guide extravaganza. We had 36 guides donate their time. Um, but I know both Linda and Nancy talked about getting a guide and um, I love using guides too. I think it, it cuts down the learning curve so much. And so I would suggest uh, reaching out to our website. Um, also, we have some discounts for some guides listed on our website. So next slide. Maybe that's the last slide. So, yeah, I know, um, I know Linda wanted to leave time for a Q and A. So if you have any questions, our website, is womenanglersmn.com. Uh, we'd love to have you join or just check out our website and, and see what we have to offer. All right, thank you, Michelle. Benji, the last slide. 
Uh, we're going to open it up for question and answer. So if you see the question and answer, you can type a question in there and we'll ask, um, and Benji and I will ask the, the questions. And I think we'll start with Nancy. Uh, here's a question for you. Uh, what is a good size hook to use for panfish in conjunction with sinker bobber? Um, if you're going to use just a regular old hook, like a gamagatsu hook, I would go with a size six would probably be my best option. My suggestion. Okay. Um, what is a good weight of a rod to use for pan fishing? And then also, what is a good weight for a slightly larger fish, such as a bass? I would go with the ultralight for panfish, and it will say that on the rod itself when you go to look at the different ones that they have to offer. And as far as bass, I would go with a, a medium light um, to a medium heavy. Um, you know, medium light's going to give you a lot more action, lots more sensitivity, uh, where the medium heavy is, is going to be for, you know, maybe a little bigger fish, um, but you won't get that sensitivity that you get in the, the medium light. I enjoy using medium lights for pretty much all of my fishing, besides panfish that I do, for the walleyes, um, bass, it's all medium light rods for me. Okay, the power line weight lure weight info was very helpful. So someone said, thank you, Nancy. You're welcome. And then Diane asked, any programs for grandma, grandkids, both sexes? Yes, uh, the bow program has that family program. We have a family weekend, which is wonderful. And a family can be defined any way that you want to define it. I, I know when my son was little, we went to the family program. So wonderful opportunities for moms, dad, grandma, uncles, aunts, whatever, to get together, the kids get together and have a great time with other outdoor kids. That's one of the hardest things I found with my son was finding other outdoor kids that like to go out fishing and hunting. So those becoming outdoor family programs are open to a family, however you define it. And then we also work with uh, the Three Rivers Parks um, and they offer quite a few fishing programs. Again, same sex, uh, different sexes, different ways of defining families. So go to our BOW website and those programs would be listed there um, in our 2020 calendar. Uh, the next and question you, is, I'm sorry. Can I just say, Agenda, that um, Diane, our kids tournaments are for boys and girls. Okay, great. So um, could I add could I add one thing about my rod selection? Sure. Uh, when I said medium light, that's if I'm going to be um, you know jigging a minnow, um, lindy rigging that sort of stuff. But I'm off. I'm going to pull some cranks or maybe use planer boards. Then I'll go to a, a medium heavy rod because that it's you know once you pull it behind your bolt, you got a lot of I got a lot of pull back there. So you want to make sure you have a, a much heavier rod as opposed to a medium light. So definitely want to go medium or medium heavy on that one. Okay, great. Just to clarify. Um, Nancy, how many women can participate in the women's weekend when we start hold, holding them again next year? I think I'm going to open it up to eight or 12 that okay. need lodging. Um, and then we just kind of, you know, go from there. Once in a while, we might have some local people that come in that don't need lodging that want to be a part of the event. So I make sure that I leave room for them as well. Great. And it's a great weekend. I was able to go on the first one and Nancy is an incredible instructor. Um, another question, what size rod should you use for walleye? I would use a 7.6 rod that is medium light. If you're going to be, again, if you're just going to be, you know, jigging a minnow or lindy rigging, um, maybe putting on a three hook harness for crawlers, uh, definitely 7.6 medium light. Okay. And then, um, how do you determine the right color for a lure? Because <laughs> you go in a bait shop and there's every color in the rainbow. Yes, there is. Um, you know, it's kind of personal preference. One thing to keep in mind is what kind of water you're fishing in. If you're going to be fishing in really dark water or maybe the water is really clear. Um, for example, Minnewaska, the zebra mussels are so crazy out here that you can be in 12 feet of water. And if I drop a penny down to the bottom of the lake, I can see it. Um, so that really kind of puts a spin on what kind of what color to use, I guess. Um, I always like my brights. I like my white and my pinks. Um, as far as doing a Lindy rig, I keep it really simple and I just use a uh, bead on top of my hook and my hook. Um, and that's my Lindy rig. I don't put on 
what I call a lot of jewelry. I don't have the spinners. I don't have a lot of beads. I just, I keep it really simple and it's effective for me. Um, and I'm used to fishing like that. So that's what I do. So um, they say on cloudy days to use bright lures and on um, overcast days to use flower darker colors. So um, does it matter? Does it work? I don't know. They say walleyes see best color. The two best colors of walleyes can see is uh, red and green. So um, I guess I usually point people to those colors, but it's, um, you know, it's entirely up to you. It's a uh, um, kind of a toss the ball in the air and pick out a color. You know, unless you know, you know, if I go out fishing and I did really well in the crappies one night and I used a certain color, of course, I'm going to tell everybody what color that was. And I'm kind of an open book when it comes to fishing and I like to share my knowledge with everybody. So I'll tell them where I was fishing, what I used, what color I used, and you know, just kind of go from there. Well, great. Well, our webinar was scheduled till 1245. It's 1246. So I'm, I am going to um, end it now, but my email and my phone number are on the, the page right now. I can get a hold of Nancy and Michelle. So if you have more questions or if you want to find their contact information, feel free to email me or call me. Uh, my state work phone goes right to my personal cell phone. So I'll answer it any time of the day. And I really want to thank um, Michelle and Nancy for taking their time today to host this webinar with me. So thank you both. Thank you for having me. Okay, yeah, my so pleasure. And I think that's it, Benji. So thank you everyone. And we'll see you next Wednesday for the next topic. All right, I'm gonna stop the recording and